73-year-old woman with right dementia no, no, who no. was shoved to the ground and cuffed. Stop. In an emotional interview, her daughter says her mother... was confused and scared by what happened. It's heartbreaking video. A 23-year-old woman with dementia is pushed to the ground and arrested. She weighs just 80 pounds and she's injured. Now the daughter of that elderly woman, Karen Garner, is speaking out. She was confused and scared. She didn't understand what was going on. Alyssa Schwartz told CBS this morning that her mother suffered severe injuries from that violent police encounter. This is mom's jacket that she had on the day that it happened. And it's got the blood on the back from where her hands were handcuffed. Ma'am, police, stop. Body cam footage shows police approach the woman along the side of the road as she carries flowers. She was accused of trying to shoplift $14 worth of items from a Walmart in Loveland, Colorado. Store security says once they confronted her, she returned the items. The police seem to be determined to arrest her. I'm going home. They just released footage from the arrest last summer. It shows officers forcing Karen Garner to the ground and putting her in handcuffs. Right now you're resisting, which is not going to fly with me. Her family says the woman's dementia impairs her ability to understand. I'm going home. Another officer comes to assist. The elderly woman is pushed hard against the cop car. The family says she finished? suffered a dislocated shoulder and broken arm. They also allege she was kept in a jail cell for six hours with no medical attention. They hurt my wrists, they hurt my shoulders. Karen Garner's family filed a lawsuit alleging excessive force. That led to the discovery of this video at the station house, showing police watching the arrest video and mocking the woman. Three police officers have resigned, and a sergeant is on administrative leave. Garner's daughter is calling on those officers to be prosecuted. I think they need to go to jail. A number of police departments in Colorado have now enlisted the Alzheimer's Association to train officers how to handle similar situations.
Welcome, by the way. Words in my mouth, bro. You gotta get off me. Words in my mouth. You can back up. Please back up. I know we're trying to do it. Back up. June 26, 2020. Attorneys say this video shows 73-year-old Karen Garner being stopped by Walmart employees after she wandered out of the store without paying for soda and detergent. Employees eventually escort her back inside. 
According to a federal civil rights lawsuit, Ms. Garner tried to pay for the items, but employees wouldn't let her. Police had already been called, and that's when Ms. Garner decides to walk home. She was just two blocks from her home when she was stopped. All right, let's stop, ma'am. But attorney Sarah Shelke says her client's disabilities weren't considered during the arrest that followed. Ms. Garner was suffering from dementia. She was suffering from sensory aphasia. This, um, they both affect her ability to really understand what's going on in the world around her. The video is insane to watch. Two minutes into the body camera video, the lawsuit says Officer Austin Hopp grabs Miss Garner's left arm and takes her to the ground. I'm going home. It makes you very worried about vulnerable people in, in the community with a police force like that. Garner is eventually handcuffed and taken to a patrol car. By that time, Officer Dadia Jalali has arrived on scene. Great. Get in the car. In you go. Do not hook on to him. And a citizen who's been watching the interaction approaches the officers. You have to use that much aggression. Oh, yeah, give me your car so I can put a report. Okay. I see you say there how you throw the little kid. This, is, this isn't just some random act of aggression. Their supervising sergeant, Philip Metzler, showed up and Metzler made the comment, what, when you told her to stop, she, she uh, kept walking, right? So we got her on obstruction. We got her on resisting. She's take her to the jail. And if they don't want to prosecute her, I don't care. Before Mrs. Garner is transported to jail, the officers talk more about the ordeal. A little bloody and little money, that's how it works. Yeah, is the blood on her? Yeah. yeah, that's her blood. Mrs. Garner was transported to the department and court documents allege she spent several hours crying in pain. That's okay, Ouch. we got you. The suit says she was later taken to the Larimer County Jail in Fort Collins while injured. Dislocated her shoulder, fractured her arm kept her in a jail cell away from family, medical care, um, everything that a vulnerable at-risk person in the community like her needed then. Um, they kept her from it for over six hours. Now, Shelke says the family needs to see accountability. The behavior is indefensible. They knew they were being recorded and yet they did it anyway. We have to ask ourselves, why? Hey. We reached out to Loveland Police and they tell us it's policy that they can't comment on pending litigation. Hey everybody, how's it going? This
close the door. I closed my door. We had her in the car. You closed your door, but she still wasn't in on my side. Oh, I, I told her. Sorry to do That's okay. That's why I called for another unit. I was like, um, yeah, hello? I don't want the bed act of school and start jumping in. Oh, no, okay. Is that blue team of If you record podcasts and videos remotely with Riverside, your content will look and sound so good no one will know. You record in your mom's basement. From your laptop. On a web browser, Riverside automatically records. The Breakfast Club, bitches. You can call me the donkey of the day, but like, I mean no harm. Yeah, it's donkey of the day for Friday, March 11th, goes to two YouTubers named Saucy and Honey. Real names, Johnson, LaRose, and Charlotte Fisher. Now, let the record show. I respect YouTubers, okay? It's 2022. All YouTubers are doing is using what they got to get what they want, okay? What they got is technology that I didn't grow up on, okay? What they want, I don't know exactly. But if I had to guess, I would say... You're being mentioned because you're facing seven years in prison. That's not a good thing. And that's what I'm trying to relay this morning. What is the greatest series ever written? The Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Book of Mormon, another testament. The cops shoot a black man who was a hero. He disarmed the bad man, okay? He disarms the bad man and cops come in and they shoot the good guy. Let's put up a picture of Mr. Quan Green. This is such a sad story. This is a man in California.
he was at a California restaurant. He just disarmed a gunman after a scuffle. He was shot by the police while his back was turned. He was shot multiple times by a San Jose officer. Quan Green and his friends were eating at La Victoria in San Jose. March 27th is when this happened. A man came in, threatened everybody. His attorney, Adante Pointer, said, the man left the restaurant and returned with two others and a spat ensued, right? Let's put up a picture of the altercation, okay? Now you see, that's an altercation, right? One of the other men pulled out a gun. According to multiple reports, Green's attorney said his client was defending himself and tried to take the gun away during the incident. You see that clearly, all right? Green, who is a community football player, tried to shield everyone from further disaster and is hailing him a hero, okay? At one point, the clip fell out of the gun. The attorney said Green put the clip back in, but he never pointed it at anyone. So what you see here is a young man who sprang into action to defend himself and others and was backing away creating space between he and the gunman who was trying to take the gun back from him, trying to deescalate the situation. So let's show another picture. This is Green backing away. He's the hero. He's protected people. He has disarmed the bad guy. Green was backing out of the restaurant away from the fight. One police already about 800 feet away responding to a homicide opened fire on him, the 20 year old. The 20 year old -old was shot multiple times in the abdomen, the leg and arm. The attorney said his client did not even know that the police were on the scene. And they plan to file a civil suit against the department. The police never gave any orders. Check this out, okay? The police never gave any orders until he got to the door. No one knew the police were outside. He was a peacemaker, Pointer said. He was backing out the door. And at the time, the police said, drop the gun. And not even two seconds later, he was shot. He was never given the time to recognize the police. He was never given the time to drop the gun and he was the hero. Put up the picture of this hero again. See, this is what happens when you are a black hero in America. That man risked his life, sprang into action, stopped others from being injured or killed. Police arrive, they're not even present for that situation. They don't know, they just see what? Black man with with gun must die.
He's fighting for his life. He's still alive. Uh, they tried to kill him. As many bullets as they put in his body, it's a miracle that he is living. Okay. Um, San Jose police chief, let's put up his picture. That's Chief Anthony Mata said the officer was uh, the officer who fired his weapon has four years of experience and was placed on routine administrative leave. Uh, we're going to continue to follow this story. Uh, now, here's the reality of it. Okay, it's clear. that the brother who was shot multiple times was not trying to kill a cop. He was not trying to harm anyone else. He was the hero who just disarmed a bad guy, right? Which means everything in the narrative that says the cops decided to shoot first basically and ask questions never is true. Now here's what has to happen. Because if this doesn't happen, people will continue to distrust the police and generally not like the police. You see, there are bad actors in every profession. There are corrupt individuals in every industry. There are negligent people in every job. But when that happens, people get fired and arrested, okay? In this situation, there were There is no way in the hell you can tell me this cop should not be fired and arrested. It's called gross negligence, okay? Negligent murder, negligent homicide, involuntary manslaughter. I don't give a damn which one you use. You have a plethora of opportunity here to create the trust equity needed so that communities and cops can actually have a common sense conversation. Now let's stop all this off the record stuff. Because police officers will tell you off the record, oh, that's jacked up, that's messed up what happened, that was wrong for what that cop did. But if you all are not willing to stand up and speak out now, whatever judgment you get, because of the bad cops that exist among you, you deserve it. You deserve that judgment because you refused to speak out against it. All right, thoughts. Yeah, I mean, first, I'm just I'm glad that he's okay, and and hopefully he does recover because I mean, this is it's so difficult to even hear the story. And and I agree with you. I mean, what you're getting at is accountability. Yeah. When we make mistakes, we have accountability for our mistakes, and there shouldn't be anybody that's above that. And this is one of the things when we're talking about policy, because you know I'm always going to try to take it to policy, ending qualified immunity, for example. This needs to be on the table when we're talking about really being honest and serious about what it's going to take to make sure that we're restoring trust in this profession, in these institutions. And yeah, we we need to be real. And I find you know a lot of I agree with you. I think there are a lot of law enforcement officers that agree. Whether or not you're willing to then speak publicly about that, that's a different thing. But we need more people who are gonna put themselves out there so that we can get to a better future here where we're safe, where people are protected, where when you're doing the right thing, then you're not punished with bullets into you. I mean, this is this yeah. is ridiculous. That's right. It doesn't matter if you're male or female, taking the thermal shred stack is the best way to
confronted by the police, but this ended up in the woman being knocked out and being arrested, even though she committed absolutely no crime whatsoever. Uh, the body camera footage from Solano County show deputies beat a black woman unconscious, all right? And proceeded to lie about it according to a new federal lawsuit that has been filed. The events unfolded as Nakia Porter and her 61 year old father were making the 100 mile drive home to Orangevale, northeast of Sacramento after a family trip to Oakland. This is a family affair. Her two daughters, ages three and six, and four year old niece were in the back seat. I want you to remember the ages of these children. Porter was behind the wheel when they stopped along an empty road in Dixon. The deputy squad car pulled up behind them with lights flashing. Porter already was out of the car and explained that they were just switching drivers and would be on their way according to the court filing. Now they claim this all happened because of having mismatched plates. Um, let me re remind everyone, no criminal activity took place whatsoever. The plate that The deputy uh, called in to dispatch, matched the vehicle, no issue there. Uh, here's what I want to do. I want to go to that first video. Approaching me and putting me on the car with force. So those that are listening, I am not a yes, risk. You have two different plates on your vehicle. Two different plates, but you're yeah. pressing on me. You're not reading. You're not listening. What are you doing? She then goes unconscious. The police officer actually makes a mention that she is unconscious. Let me give you some more background to this story. A porter and the court filing allege the deputies punched her in the head and the stomach, kneeled on her back and pulled her hair. She says she passed out seconds after the deputies closed the handcuffs. Porter, who is five foot two and 125 pounds, says she was dragged unconscious to the back of the squad car where she came to about five minutes later. Now remember, these police officers, these deputies, they are well aware that she is unconscious. Okay, that's an important part of this story. When the paramedics arrived, the arresting deputy, Dalton McCampbell, is heard saying, poor default them, never happened. 
high. We are. was knocked out for about 20 seconds and was able to walk herself to the squad car. Deputy Lisa McDowell estimates to the paramedics that Porter was unconscious for about five seconds. All lies, according to the court filing. Porter requested that she be transported to a hospital, according to the lawsuit. Deputies McCampbell and McDowell denied the request continuing to lie to the paramedics by minimizing the assault and the injuries they had inflicted on Miss Porter, according to the court filings. Ladies and gentlemen, I wanna remind you again, there are three children inside of that vehicle. And let me go to the parental side because I'm a dad myself. This father has to watch powerless, as his little girl is being unlawfully assaulted by these monsters. They lie on the police report. They misrepresent what happened. They lie to the paramedics. Thankfully, the video evidence contradicted the fabricated facts, according to the attorney, Yasin Amadani, said so that uh, what occurred here, we believe, was racially motivated beating and terrorizing of a black family. Porter also said, by the way, remember, she's 33. She said, I was doing my best to do everything right, giving no reason to be treated like this. Let's be very clear about what's happening in America. Over 90% of Americans believe that police reform must take place. 58% believe it must be dramatic. Hell, even 51% of Republicans believe that police reform must take place. Keep in mind that based on policy, all of these cops were in violation. Based on written policy, you will find this is not the way they're supposed to do their jobs. Okay, that's written policy. But when you have a culture adversarial to the policy, culture will eat policy alive every day. And that's exactly what you're seeing. Infraction is nothing without enforcement. It's not enough to simply have a policy that is written or a rule that is available for others to see if you're not willing to enforce these policies 
and rules against those who are supposed to be the authorities of law enforcement. So the charges were dropped, she was arrested, the charges were dropped. Um, the license tag matched the vehicle, they knew it was not stolen. And it still did not stop these SOBs from taking this 33 year old mother to jail. Um, Nina, what are your thoughts here, sister? I mean, you know, I'm holding back the tears, Doc. First of all, there should have never been any charges against Miss Porter. Right. She did nothing wrong. You're right about, you know, this generational thing that's happening. So it's her father on one side, and then it's her yeah. babies being traumatized on the other side. And thank God for the. camera because but for the camera their lies probably would have prevailed and I certainly believe in this look we need to we can't even get the George Floyd act let me remind folks Pat has yep. not passed yet in the United States Congress but I digress I think for law enforcement officers who lie on their police on their reports it should be a felony offense Let's start making yep. sure that there's some real consequences to the actions of these type of law enforcement officers who make it bad for law enforcement officers who really do believe in the oath to protect and serve. Ms. Porter didn't deserve this, her family didn't deserve this, and I hope she wins in court and these officers need to be fired. Yeah, uh, let me add on that. Look, guys, she was a software engineer. Now, it doesn't matter what she is. She didn't do anything wrong and nobody deserves that no matter what their job is. But I tell you that because uh, unfortunately in this country, we have to humanize minorities. Otherwise, people don't treat them that way. Uh, first yep. thing that a lot of folks ask is, "Oh, what were they up to? They were up to switching drivers. Black white switching drivers. Like that. The new best way to make money online that nobody's talking about is something
But the cops, look, what Rashad said is an absolute stone cold fact. The cops had already run the plates. They knew that the car was not stolen and there was no infraction at all. Now, imagine, let's take a different race, okay? Let's not go, let's go Asian, okay? I partly thought that because my wife is Asian and I always try to empathize with whatever we're talking about, any situation, right? And I thought, my God, if my wife and I have switched to positions, I mean, how many times? Because we're normal human beings, right? And, and imagine if our kids are in the car and my wife goes to switch, because and then these cops come and randomly question us. Already questioning us would be weird, but then if they said, oh, you got two different plates, oh, okay, great, no problem, we'll explain that, right? But instead of asking, they draw their guns and then they smash her onto the ground. And did you see, I mean, the part that broke my heart most, I mean, every part of it is disgusting, was when they started pulling on her hair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for what? And she, I mean, and I, the other reason I bring up soft, that she's a software engineer, her dad, by the way, worked in computer networking, is because there isn't anything you can do. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do, right? For, as we talked about earlier in the show, they, for Trayvon Martin, they found out that he had, once had detention. I had detention dozens of times. Right, but and so for everyone that they assault, they then blame, right? But Mike, she couldn't have done anything more. And if you notice in the video, the part where they got super violent is when she said, you haven't even read my, me my rights. And so the, now think about that, you have rights, but if you ever dare mention them, you're gonna get assaulted worse. There's just no winning, there's no winning. How could we not empathize with that? How could you not think there but for the grace of God go I or my wife or my sister or my mother? And, and, and this is a thing that you see maybe once here, but it happens over and over again. And thank God for those cameras because yeah. they lied through yeah, and through in that report. And once you see the, uh, the video, it turns out every part of it was wrong. And, and, and guys, by the way, seeing these videos and sharing these videos makes a difference too. In Selma, Alabama, the number one thing the civil rights leaders were concerned about was, we hope the reporters take a good picture. Because they knew they were gonna get beat and they did get beat. They knew they were gonna get a cavalry charge and they did get a cavalry charge.
charge. But the, tr but the important thing was for the rest of the country to see it because it had been happening for not just decades, but for hundreds of years, That's right. right? That's right. And the problem was that nobody was seeing it. Nobody was seeing it, now you're seeing it. So for God's sake, do something. You know, that wasn't a tangent, you're right. The, so the act is it, it named after George Floyd? Yeah. Nowhere, no, no, nothing. Not even in the discussion. And then you got folks talking about, we're gonna put 100,000 more, you know, attaching to the infrastructure bill, we're gonna put 100,000 more police out there when that dealing with public safety is a universal thing. It's safety, it's jobs, it's schools. It's not just simply putting more law enforcement out on the street. And you know what, Jink? Why do we always have to qualify? I mean, you named her profession. I know why you're doing it. But there is something wrong in even that, that we got to give some extra quantification. <laughs> you know, we got to quantify the type of profession that she's in to humanize her. Everybody should be outraged by this. And Dr. Richie, you bring up a really good point about the fact that they broke protocol within their own department. That should be enough right there. Yep. And, and, and guys, look, to that point, they jailed her overnight after they viciously assaulted her for just changing seats in a car. And they said the a suspicion of resisting arrest. Well, what was she being arrested for in the first place? You knew that the car was stolen, you knew there was no crime. When you see resisting arrest with no underlying charge, it's a guarantee that the cop is lying.